going on? Back again. Just been into Sydney Tools red tapping piece for the mounts for the for the rack because one of these was just totally stuffed. So I figured why not do them all? Now they're good, which means today I can put this in. I might try to get this guy on today too. It's a bit of a squeeze getting down the side of the car, but it would be good to have them both on. Had some ball joints arrive. I don't have the tool for this though. So I should probably get that. And the ball joints arrived and I had some hardened rubber LCA bushings arrive too. Soon enough I'll be able to press these out. So here's something I didn't check after all of that. The cross member bolts on the Gazelle are M10s. The bolts from an S13 are M12, which means I will have to use the S12 brackets. The only reason I didn't use these to begin with was because these are too wide. Triangle bit, too wide. Circular bit, also too wide. I'm gonna make sure to uh, chuck these boots on first so that I minimize the, the dirt and dust that potentially get into the um, tie rods. I figured I'd do this on the bench instead of on the ground because this is just so much easier to do. There we go. That's um, not as close a fit <laughs> as I imagine it's intended to be. And the interesting part about the S12 is because it doesn't wrap around as far it's going to need some heftier spaces to reach it. Like that, there we go. You can see the gap now. So I'm going to get some really long M10s as well as some decent sized spaces for it. This is the space that you get with the, uh, the solid mounts. It's, it's meant to go in that gap. It looks like I'm going to need two of these, if not more, either side. So I've just grabbed some longer M10 bolts. I'll see how they fit and then I'll measure up the actual space see what size space I'm going to need. Get some made or see what I can find online either way. Rack is in. I've got that little swivel piece coming in the mail and then I'll be able to machine the other end of that piece I showed you and get that fitted up between these two. 14, 14, 14 and 14. Now the battery in this is just about to die. I'm going to clamp up the next bracket, grind it back, make it fit the GK Tech mount and while I do that I'm going to chuck this on charge. So I got a bit carried away while the GoPro was charging, but here it is. So you can see from here, I've got both of the GK Tech solid mounts in. One of the interesting things I found out is that um, on the S13K frame, the bolts run from underneath up and thread into the bracket, whereas this it runs from the top through the bracket and threads into the K frame. Hence why I'm not using these. The other thing too is that these use an M10 instead of an M12 and yeah these GK brackets they don't honestly they don't sit perfectly in the K frame so I might see what I can do about just like hammering that in to you know squeeze them in just a tiny bit the um the flat section on here when it meets to the side of the actual rack mount location it's very round whereas on S13 it comes and it's got like a, a tight corner and then drops so pretty much the brackets don't sit perfectly into these rack mounts here but we can make them fit pretty easy i don't know if i mentioned it in the previous video the rack that i'm using in the s12 is a uh, s13 hikus rack the benefit slash issue with running a hikus rack is that i'm gonna have to loop the hikus points or just flat out block them off but the steering ratio is quicker pretty much when it comes to like steering and leverage the longer the ratio on a manual rack the easier the steering is meant to be made uh, the shorter the ratio the more force you require to turn that rack so this is a shorter rack uh, that will be powered so it won't be as heavy as the s12 but it should be a little bit heavier than the standard s13 but yes i'll need to have to, I'll have to sort it out Probably some 13 mil, maybe 14 mil spaces for all of those. Well, one thing that we can do now is um, chuck the GK Tech tie rods onto the ends. So in here, we've got our roll center correctors and our tie rod ends, or tie rod inners. Tie rod ends are gonna go, they're gonna go to there. They're gonna stick out so far. I don't actually know what I'm gonna set these as yet. And I'll probably have to redo it once I get the car and other bits and pieces. 
back together. I think what I'm going to do is um, do the tire at end side first. Like the roll center correction bits, I didn't actually get any instructions with this. So I've had to double check over the video a couple times on how to do it properly. And now I know how to do it properly. And the way I was doing it was not properly. So first things first, that on top, if you can, and you're not just special. And now you need to torque it to 50 foot pound. There we go. So he's torqued to spec. He's torqued to spec. Chuck that on. Then this. Then these. And then this guy. Now, I don't know if that's the right position. This is already taken into account. 40 mil bump steer, correction. Ideally, like it says in the video, it's meant to be parallel with the LCA ball joint. But as we've seen, I don't have that in. Hmm. So we're back to the same problem as before. Where this, I can't get to line up properly. Because the ball joints are so damn fresh, they don't move. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna wait until next time to actually attach these because it makes more sense to do that after I've mounted the LCA into here. Because then I can figure out the actual correct distance. And if I need these longer, if I need the short ends or if I need longer ends. Because if I were to throw that onto it right now, it would sit, you know, just about where I would normally. But I know for a fact with these, with these correction kits, this whole thing is going to sit much further out. But I guess the pickup point hasn't changed. Either way, I'll wait until I sort out the LCAs to do that. I'm going to continue on the other side, getting this in. I'm probably putting him on because it's just easy to store him there on the car. Mm, the other thing I need to do is sort out this bag of crap which shouldn't have water in it, but it does because it fell over. It got blown out of the engine bay. In the rain, how good. Doing that a second time around was a hell of a lot easier. Still checked out the video while doing it because it's always good to double check. There's no way I was remembering the torque specs to, to tighten that out. So this side's done, the other side's done. I gotta get this guy on, which should be a lot easier because I haven't done it wrong to begin with. Oh, this is such a weird spot to be doing anything. One break now. Hopefully, we'll get some some of this, as well as some S13 and some CA18 stuff going down. Some SR20 and F, SR20 and CA stuff. The one thing that anchors it all. Don't over me. Fuck, this is annoying. <laughs> I got this side in. I got that side in. I got less shit on my workbench now. I'm gonna sit this one the same as the other side, just like that. So this is what we're looking at. I'm assuming we're gonna be looking at fresh ball joints, fresh bushings, this all connected up, and then these sticking out like this far with ridiculous negative camber. It's gonna look dumb. Sick. Now I can finally show you guys, not that there are too many S12 owners out there, how you can fit the S13 rack to match the column. This is the lower column piece from an S13. That is the uh, pickup point on the rack from an S13. There's usually a uni joint or a, a yoke or a U joint that goes there. You end up getting this chopped off at the top. You get that T flange removed and then get that splined to match the output from the uh, wire wall on the column. So you end up with something, so I'm gonna line it up with one hand. You end up with something about this length that has the perfect space left for the uni joint. And voila, you have an S13 rack that's in. Voila. Sorry, I'm gonna leave it at that for now. Probably get working on the S13 soon. Get out of the sun so I can actually see. Arms and bits and pieces to replace the S13. We're getting closer and closer to getting power steering in the Gazelle. We're not very close to getting an engine in the Gazelle, but we're close to this. So you just saw me uh, use the hydraulic press to get one of the ball joints out. It was loud. It happened really, really quickly. So that's the one I just did. This is the test one that I did with the actual clamp in the kit. I uh, found myself needing a breaker bar. I actually had it mounted up like this. Breaker bar on the end of here. There's a hollow point in the end of this. So the actual thread, once I had the piece on top of it, there's still thread sticking out of it. There's no issues with that because that 
cleared it fine. But I uh, had that like that. Breaker bar on the end of here. And I was standing on this, standing on that, until it finally went. It took a really bloody long time. But um, doing it on the hydraulic press was like a hundred times faster. Uh, but also a hundred times scarier, because it all just went bang. I need to sort out a better, better grip mount for this. But now, Today I'm doing my ball joints. I did try to give them a go on the press, but it was a bit shaky and unstable. I didn't want to just launch it everywhere. Getting this to go in completely level is a bit of a bitch. So I am starting them on the press and then finishing them with the uh, with the hand tool. This, this tool fucking sucks. So uh, I'm thinking surely there's better ones out there. I pressed in my first poly bushing for the NX. I went to do this piece as well, but it's just so incredibly big that I couldn't get it to go in. And when I did it in this, being poly, squished in and then it all just went fling. So I'm, I'm learning. One of the next things to do is this, the uh, LCF bushings. This is my first time using presses and bushing and ball joint removal tools. So it's all a bit goofy and it's taken a lot longer than it probably would for most people. This, oops, is looking fresh, but that will finally fit in the S13 knuckles. So I'll go over what I've been doing real quick. It's pretty straightforward to a lot of people. I've gone and removed the ball joints, cleaned up the arms, removed all the grease inside the seat, grab out the new ball joint. There's your ball joint, grab a tall bit, and this bit. If you're like me and you've got a cheap, cheap press, it's probably not gonna press completely straight down. This one, it tends to angle backwards a bit. This guy points that way just a little bit, which means I kind of have to wiggle shit around until it goes in evenly all over. So doing it that way, I can get it most of the way in. So it's not exactly seated. Oh no, it looks better off the camera. That's why I finish it off with that. If you do it manually, because you don't have the right, the right tools for your press, it can be a bitch. I'm not sure if these need to point, I don't know if they need to point a certain way. I feel like they don't, but whatever. That is now seated, which means I'm gonna be able to put these in soon. Oh wait, no, no I'm not. I have to get these hunks of garbage bushings out. Whatever, it's it's somewhat it's somewhat close. What have we got down there? Getting these boots on can also be a bit of a bitch. Requires a bit of massaging. There you go. So another thing is that um I've been playing a set of calls on PC for god years now. And um I actually run a server on there every now and then. There's a few people that join, a couple mates, and a few other uh, randoms if I leave it open to the public. And I stream it on Twitch. I tried streaming on YouTube for a bit, but I think I want to keep it, keep the games off of YouTube. So I'll keep that on Twitch. Twitch is going to be the same name, it's still Easy Rider LTD. Uh, and I've already had a few people come over, join, people join a few servers, people join the chat. It's good fun. I don't have a schedule or anything like that yet. Yet. I don't know if I will get a schedule for it. It's just a bit of fun here and there. I'll occasionally chuck up onto the um, Instagram story that I'm live streaming and I'm running a server. Uh, if I can make it like a regular thing, like once a week on a certain day, I reckon that'd be pretty sweet. It's just a matter of whether I can, because with life happening, who knows. GoPro's about to die, so I'm gonna put on the charge. I'm gonna grab some lunch, and I'll see how I can go getting these bushings out. So I'll see you then.